Hi everyone, welcome to Jabatikki. Spring Boot is a widely used and very popular enterprise level high performance framework. We all know how Spring Boot reduces developer effort or how it makes our development life easier, right? So in this tutorial, I will guide some best practices and a few tips which you can use to improve your Spring Boot application and make it more efficient. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So the first key point to design any Spring Boot application, you need to follow proper packaging style. When I say proper packaging style, it will help to understand the code and the flow of the application easily. So let me demonstrate this packaging style with one code. Let me go to my IntelliJ idea. I have created this particular product service and if you can observe here, I just created one root package com.javatechi, then I follow the proper structure to define all the config related properties or config related class I created config package to define all the web layer related stuff or to define the controller I created the controller package similarly to capture the request and response I created the DTO entity which will contain your model or entity object which will persist to the DV similarly to define my custom exception I created this exception package handler repository service and util each package contains different type of class whose role is completely different okay so it's good practice to define the proper package structure you can structure your application with the meaningful package when i say meaningful package it does not mean that you need to create the package name as a only dto you can change it to the bo which is a value object okay or you can change it to the bo business object it's up to you which pattern you are following so these are the standard packaging structure you need to follow and the another advantages of using this proper packaging structure in spring boot if you will not define the package in a proper order make one as a parent then define all other packages as a child to that if you will not follow that then spring boot won't scan it manually okay by default spring boot won't scan your packages for that you need to explicitly define the component scan so let me let me tell you that example okay let me create another package create the package here com dot jt see i'm just creating different package than this com dot java techie okay com dot jt let's say demo now here i will just create a class new java class let's say i'll name it common utils anything okay then i will just define the constructor of it and I will just add a print statement sys out let's say this object or bean is created now I need to define this as a bean so I can annotate here component fine now if you observe this is my root package when I say root package this is the different package inside that package I define all my sub packages okay and this is completely another package now the main class of the spring boot found inside this java tech key okay so it means either you follow this if you will create another package than the root package where this main class is presented i will not scan that bean so let's prove it whether really spring will scan this particular bean or not if it will not scan then how i can tell the spring to scan the bean okay so i will simply run this class So application is up and running on port 9191. Now if you will check this syntax SOPLN statement in the console, you won't find anything. Okay, because this object itself is not created. This bean itself is not initialized. The reason you are following the different package structure. Now how you can tell to the Spring Boot or Spring Framework to scan all the packages. For that, you need to define the component scan explicitly. If you will follow the package structure the way we did here, com.javatechi, then each sub packages, then you no need to define the component scan. Spring Boot is smart enough 
to scan your root package then it will load all the bean in the context okay but if you are following the different package structure the way i have here java take it then another package is completely different jt.demo then in that case you need to tell to the spring boot using this component scan annotation and you can tell what all base packages you need to scan for now we have something com is common in both the package right i will tell to the spring boot please scan all the packages which is begin with com dot okay and any field so that is the reason i just define the star now if i'll rerun this you can find the common util statement in the console log okay when i say common util statement i mean the bean will be created by the spring boot so we'll observe once the output we can see in the console so you can see here the application is started on port 9191 and the sopln statement is printed here common utils bean is created by default spring boot won't scan all different type of package wherever he will find the main class where it is con it contains the main method it will just scan those corresponding packages okay if your main method is different than the package which you are using then you need to define the component scan okay let's move to the next one the second key feature is use spring boot starters this is really a cool feature of spring boot we can very easily use starter dependency without adding single dependency one by one for example let's say i just want to design a mbc with the database integration so in that case if you'll go to the code and if you'll open the pom.xml i didn't define the spring core or spring context or spring orm spring transaction this dependency i didn't add one by one or separately i didn't include those dependency only the two dependency i added here spring boot starter web and spring boot starter jpa so this jpa spring boot starter data jpa dependency will load your all the orm related dependency and this spring boot starter web will load your all dependency which is required to build a web mbc framework okay and another advantages of using this spring boot starters to avoid the version conflict okay when i say version conflict let's say in, if you'll go and check the spring boot starter parent version we are using 2.7.5 now this is the parent accordingly this parent what spring boot will does whatever the dependency you will add here let's say jpa email web whatever dependency you will add it will load all the corresponding de dependency version we no need to define the version explicitly this is another header to maintain the correct version of dependency in your project for example let's say if i will add here version manually let's say version i'll just define 2 dot let's say i'm just defining 2 dot 6 dot 1 okay you have this option you can define your version by your own self but since you are using the spring boot starters spring boot internally added one parent dependency you can see here spring boot starter parent based on this version spring boot will pick the latest compatible version for each and every dependency what you added and he will configure in your m2 repo and if you will go into this project and if you will open the meta nf inside the target i didn't uh, build the project if you will build and if you will check the meta nf you will find out each corresponding version but even i can show you the version here okay if you will expand this you can see here yeah can you see here all the same version dependency it added since i added the spring data jpa now spring boot load the spring transaction version this and if you can observe since we added the spring starter web spring boot load the web mbc version is 5.3.23 all the version should be in the same number we should not add the different version number for each dependency so that headache we no need to take care if you are using the spring boot okay so let's minimize this now let's move to the next one so the next key feature to use the lombok framework so as a developer you have probably heard of the lombok project lombok is a java library that can be used to reduce your codes and allow you to write clean code using few of the annotation for example if you will create any class 
then you must need to define the constructor getter setter method to string method equals and hash code method right let's say i have 100 class then each class which i am using in my project for them i need to define the getter setter and constructor all the predefined methods okay so in that case if you use this lombok as a dependence in your project then you can avoid such plenty line of code to define your all the getter setter to string and equals and has code how you can achieve that using lombok simply i will show you go to the any dto or entity class i will go to the dto package let's say i have something called product request dto okay if i will open this request dto class I have few field here name description product type let me zoom this product type quantity price and supplier name and supplier code now to use all argument constructor here I have defined the constructor manually can you see here this is what all argument constructor and I if I want to use the default constructor then I need to define it explicitly similarly for getter and setter method I need to define getter and setter for all the attribute available for this class and you can see here the equals and hash code to string I mean whatever the feature or the method from the object class you want to use you need to override them in your class okay and this getter and setter is something called public exposed method those also you need to define explicitly but if you are using Lombok it provided couple of annotation so if you use those annotation you no need to define those methods explicitly in your code for example to achieve the getter and setter both you can annotate on top of class i want data data annotation from the lombok can you see here the import statement from the lombok this will give you the both getter and setter method and if you want to define all argument constructor then simply you can use all argument constructor annotation okay this is giving the compilation error because already you define the all argument constructor here so if you will remove this this all argument constructor will be loaded from the this particular annotation now if you want to use the no argument constructor simply you can use no args constructor so this annotation itself self explanatory can you see here to use the all argument constructor at the rate all arg constructor to use the no argument constructor at the rate no args constructor now you need to remove this since we added the at the rate data he will take care about public exposed method which is getter and setter and you can remove them cool and to string also you can remove it because by default at the rate data annotation will load the to string method let's say you don't want to use the getter and setter both you want to use only the getter so you no need to define at the rate data there is annotation to use getter okay let's say you don't want to use the getter you want to use only setter so simply you can use at the red setter okay so this annotation can easily understand role of what this annotation will do if you want to use the both getter and setter rather than define it individually you can define at the red data apart from that you can also define at the red equals and hash code method okay so you can remove the equals and hash code which you override from your object class now how this class looks like only we added few annotation to avoid plenty lines of code in my class now if you have multiple DT or entity you want to use the getter setter constructor and equals and has code simply annotate with this lumbo now I will tell you how you can configure this lumbo in your project okay so first thing the first step you need to define the lumbo dependency as part of your pom.xml if you scroll down I have defined the lumbo okay this is this will be a dependency now the next step if you are using IntelliJ idea just go to the plugin section let me go to the plugins already I installed it you can search your something called lumbo okay first if you will go to the marketplace if lumbo is not available for you go to the marketplace and install it once you will install make sure this need to be enabled in your id adding the dependency is not enough to work with lombok you need to add this plugin if you are using intellij idea but if you are using eclipse then you need to go to the m2 then you need to run the lombok jar 
and you need to configure your eclipse.exe to that lombo okay i will share the link in video description how you can configure in eclipse now let's move to the next one we are good with the lombo you can now play with these annotation in all your entity or dto class okay cool now let's go to the presentation and we'll see the next key feature use controllers only for routing use services for business logic we know when we are designing any application we basically write one controller class to define all the endpoints and we are writing one service class to define all our business logic similarly we are writing another class called repository or dao class to define all the database operation right so let me show you this controller and services pattern so if you will go to the intellij idea and if you will open the controller package you can find the class called product controller now if i'll zoom this let me yeah if i'll zoom this i define all the web layer related stop in this particular class product controller where it will take the input product request from the postman or from the user interface and then from the controller it will call the service class okay if you will go and check the service this is where exactly i write my all business logic okay in this particular service class i didn't write any other logic it's just what i want to play with this particular object or what business you want to perform once you will get this input from your web layer that operation i have written here so it's always recommended to use the service to write your business logic and use the controller to define your web layer related stop what should be the url what should be the request okay and which kind of http method is this what is the response type you want to return back to the end user all these stuff you need to define in your controller class so these are the basic stops about your controller designing and service designing always use the controller because or you can say use the controller as a dedicated for routing routing the request from controller to other layer so that is the reason you can use the controller and this is pretty straight forward all the business logic of your application you need to handle in your service class these are the two main difference now if you ask me hey can i write the service logic in my controller class you can write it but it is not a good practice to keep or to mess all the code in a single class for web layer go for product controller for business logic go for product service okay now let's move to the next key feature let me go to the presentation now the next key feature use constructor injection with lombo so when i say constructor injection as we know spring provide a great feature called dependency injection using that it will inject a bin to the dependent class and it will load into the ioc container so there are two type of dependency injection given by spring you can consider one is as a setter injection another as a constructor injection again if you want your bin to be inject optionally which is not mandatory you can go for setter injection if you want to forcefully inject that bin then you need to use the constructor injection these are the theoretical statement i don't want to go in depth about type of dependency injection but i will give you the best practice how you can use the constructor injection using lombo and why so if you go to the code let me minimize this fine as we just discussed before we should have controller and product service product service will hold your business logic and controller will hold your routing information so once request reach to this controller class then immediately from controller i need to pass the input to the service it means from this controller class i want to use the service since you are using the spring or spring boot there is a concept called dependency injection just inject that bin for this controller spring will create the object for us rather than we create spring will create it for us now how you can inject it there are couple of approach you can use at the rate auto add okay this is at the rate auto add this is the way you can do it but if you want forcefully to inject this bin or if this bin is not found then this controller should throw the exception i mean to access the service 
this controller must need this service as a bin right or this controller must expecting this bin to inject i mean this is what i can say this is not optional for controller this is mandatory for controller to achieve the business in that case you can define something like this constructor and you can initialize this this is what something called constructor injection but since you you know how to use the lombo rather than define this constructor you can simply use at the rate all argument constructor if you will define at the rate all argument constructor this particular class will be initialized at run time when lombo will add the constructor for you it means this particular bin must be injected to this controller class there is no way we can skip that okay so that's the reason it is highly recommended to using constructor injection over other types because it allows the application to initialize all required dependency at the time of initialization and there is another annotation you can play with that also you can use at the rate required args constructor okay anything is fine either you can use at the rate required arc constructor or at the rate all argument constructor you can play with these two annotation from the lombo to perform the constructor injection now let's move to the next one use sl4j logging logging is very important if a problem occurs while your application is running in production logging is the only way to find out the root cause why your application got failed you can identify from the log statement therefore you should think carefully before adding the loggers logging label and what messages you want to keep as part of your logging so let me demonstrate this logging in the code if you will go to the service and controller class i have written the log statement okay if you observe here i have defined at the rate sl4j and can you see here this sl4j also came from the lombo so if you don't want to enable the logging from the lombo you can just simply comment it out and what you can do here you can simply write private i mean manually you need to create the logger object okay that's it logger make sure to import it from the sl4j log then get it from the factory logger factory dot get logger and give the class name fine this way you can get the log object and you can log your input for each method call but if you don't want to explicitly define the logger object it's good to go with the sl4j annotation given by lombo and as you know this particular logging is a key aspect while designing any application by seeing this statement see here if you will go and check this service code method i have written something called log.info create a new product this particular method see again it's a different kind of pattern how you want to define your logging statement any string if i will write here something like this that that makes sense but really it's not recommended first you need to define what is the class name and what method execution started and then end of the method you need to define execution ended so that by searching with this two string you can easily identify if the execution begins whether really it is ended or not okay next to that you can see here there is a difference log.info and log.debug now whatever the value i got from the request i am just capturing here can you see here this is the class name this is the method name and the request parameter i am just converting as a json string and i am just capturing it similarly whatever the response i will get back once i will save it to the dv again i am just capturing that so to capture the request and response i just use log.debug and to check whether the method execution begin and whether it is ended or not i used log.info similarly if you observe if there is any exception occurs i am just using log dot error okay this if you observe here i used three different logging label info debug and error so it's good practice to keep log dot error if any exception occurs and if you don't want your each and every log statement will go to the production log or the application where it hosted you don't want to full this text with the memory i mean It, it it will occupy the memory right if, if you'll write n number of log statement in your code and if you want everything to print in your console then definitely it will occupy memory 
so log dot info will only visible in the production log or in your application log but this debug won't be printed to your log file okay but if you want to include all info and debug then you need to customize your logging label in your application dot properties file that is up to you but this is the standard you need to follow log dot info and debug and error and if you observe one thing while capturing the object or while appending something to this string log dot debug or something i am not using the string concatenation so usually you can do something like this product service create new product received response from database and what response you are getting you can simply add this i mean in the same string i can concat it but that is not a good practice if you are using sl4j just make use of dynamic parameter okay this is another advantages to save the memory if you are using the log statement or if you are writing the log statement similarly if you will jump to the next method get products see the log statement i added this particular get products will fetch all the product object from the db so there is no input parameter so i am not capturing that request okay so simply the class name and the method execution started and then i am just debug i mean log dot debug i just added to check what all records it fetch from the db here also i use the curly braces not string concatenation and if any exception occurs i just added log dot error and simply class name method name execution okay this should be ended right fine similarly you can write log statement for each and every method from your service dao and controller class so this is what i am showing in the service now if you go to the controller everything i just added log info because this is the first call what user will hit when he hit the end point the request will landed to this particular method or this particular class so i want to capture the request and i want to capture the response getting back from the service okay and if you see the statement class name then method name again i no need to define the um, execution started and execution ended here because once the request came here first this statement will print then the request will delegate to service when it will go to the service this statement will be automatically printed in the console okay so again this is not forced that you can follow the same pattern it is up to you how you can define that but make sure to understand when to use what exact logging label log dot info log dot debug log dot error log dot warning when to use okay that that is what something you need to understand uh, while implementing the logging the string statement does not matter but you need to follow some pattern to define the log statement okay now what we'll do let's see the log flow okay i mean by seeing the log statement whether someone can understand the flow of execution or not so the server is upright i'll go to the postman i'll simply remove this okay first i will verify in the db i have record 1 2 3 4 5 6 i'll search a product by id okay so i'll simply go to the postman i will hit this particular endpoint 1 i'll make it get okay now just call this you are getting the result here this is something custom response i created i will come to that point status is succeed and the results or the output we get this now if you will go and check your log statement if you will go to the this run and if i will zoom this yeah i can show you here see the execution begin from the controller here okay product controller get product by id this is what the input i have given now the next statement is the the request is delegated to the service product service get product by id execution started so if you observe here there is no debug statement is printed here because i didn't specify that you can use the logback.xml or even in fact you can change in the application.properties file what logging label you want to see as part of your console so if you observe here next again product service get product by id execution ended now again request response came back to the controller controller dot get product method by id this and what is the response you are getting by seeing this flow someone can easily understand request begin with controller then it went to the service then again service communicate with the database method and it get the response and it return back to the controller so if some exception occurs in middle that will also captured as part of your log 
so that you can check the log file and identify exactly where which exactly line your code got failed okay you can easily identify the root cause where which who is the culprit exactly where the code is breaking okay so that is the reason this logging is the key feature or key aspect in real time project fine now let's move to the next key feature which is use meaningful words for classes methods variable and other attributes so it's always recommended to define meaningful or understandable class name or method name for example if you will go and check the project see here to understand okay this is my controller and it will deal with the product object i define the class name as a product controller you can define something called product service controller not like that okay so again this is the best practices or the uh, naming convention you can follow it's not mandatory that you can define the product controller only your class name since i found this particular controller will deal with the product object that is the reason i defined it as a product controller let's say you want to design some e-commerce application right you you can have something like inventory controller or order controller or courier controller you can define n number of controller by understanding the role of that classes similarly while defining the attribute i define your product service right i can name it srb1 this variable name i can define like that but if someone new to the team and he check the code what you will understand with this name right so it's good to follow the proper name and make sure while defining any variable first it should follow the camel case and proper naming convention now to define the method here i write create new product okay it's not something that you can only define the name as a create new product but the name which you will define should be understood by some other member as well i can write something add product anything by seeing this method name i can understand okay this method will add product to the dv or by seeing this method name someone can easily understand okay this method will take the product object and create a new product object in your dv similarly you can the second method to fetch all the product from dv i define your get products this is what my method name so if someone see this method name get products he can understand okay it will fetch list of object which is list of products you can also name it um, anything okay which should be the meaningful find all products okay so this is this is your uh, naming convention how you will follow so you can follow the proper naming convention to define the method name and class name and variable name so if you go and check the service uh, this is the service class right here also i define some method which can be understood by someone easily okay by seeing this method name he can identify the role of this method what this method is going to do if i will execute this okay so that is the reason it's good practice to follow this naming convention now let's move to the next one if you will check the presentation the next one is bean validation so first we should know why do we need this bean validation when i say bean validation you can consider this as a request validation now if you will go to the code if you will check the controller method let me show you this controller will take the request what is that request product request dto as part of this request dto it will take the input from the user name description product type quantity uh, price supplier name and supplier code these are the field user will give either from the ui or from the postman okay but make sure to the user what all value is optional for you or what all value is mandatory for you to process the request how you can tell to the user okay so that is the reason it's good practice to implement the request validation so that when user will submit the input that time he can easily identify okay either i miss this input which is mandatory to process my request or i give some bad input something that he can easily understand when he will send the request itself if you will not add this restriction whatever user will give you can process that and you will get some exception kind of thing for example let me show you see here i just added 
this uh, annotation from the starter validation from the spring not blank when i say other it not blank this name field either should not be empty or it should not be null so combination of empty and null check can be possible using other it not blank so i even add the message here product name should not be null or empty so this is product type right i want this description is optional whether user is giving it or not it does not impact to my application it is fine or it does not impact to the create product request in my dv so it's fine i make it optional now again i want this product type to mandatory as part of your request so you can restrict user to must pass any value as part of the product type similarly quantity is not defined so for this to adding the quantity the minimum value should be 1 if user is giving 0 then it will give the error okay this is valid right when you will add a product you need to define the quantity whether you are adding one uh, product object or 100 product object and what is the corresponding price for them you need to define that so if you observe your i define when user will give the price value it should more than 200 and it should less than 5 lakh okay or what is that 1 2 3 4 5 5 lakh okay similarly supplier name is optional for me and supplier code is mandatory so by defining this annotation i can inform to the user what mistake he passed as part of the request immediately he can understand okay i missed this things he can modify the request and he can resubmit it again for example le let me show you this um, create request okay this is the request dto and in controller i am taking this as a input which is same product request dto class and i am telling to spring boot please validate this particular object based on the annotation whatever i have defined here okay so let's test this create request so i'll go to the postman i will just this is the post request right change to the post i'll just simply what i'll do quantity i will give or anything which is mandatory uh, this name i am not giving okay and price i am giving 100 quantity i am giving zero i am just giving the wrong input let's say i am the new user to this application and uh, someone give me this input i need to pass either from the ui or uh, since i am a user i don't know how to pass it in the postman but let's say these are the input user is giving from the user interface or ui page now when he will submit the request immediately he should get the response or he should know what mistake he did he got the status as failed and all the errors what is the error name field is having some issue when processing the or when giving the name input product name should not be null or empty he is giving the empty right and quantity he is giving zero which should be more than 1 and price product price cannot be less than 200 so easily by reading this thing he can understand okay product price i am giving 100 which should be more than 200 right so he will correct the request and he will send it now now since user understand what mistake he did while sending the request he modify the request and he simply trigger the request now he got the result as a status is succeed and this particular object is being added now he can check in the ui or directly in the dv to verify the record is added or not the record is added so the bin validation or the request validation is recommended to notify to the end user what wrong input he provided while processing the request okay so it's good practice to inform to the end user through this request validation rather than storing those unused information as part of our dv now let's say i don't have this restriction uh, this um, request validation now user will give something like quantity is 0.5 okay and uh, price is nothing let's say 0 0 or uh, let's say 1 0 10 rupees this is a watch anything okay and uh, this is optional right if user will not give anything it's fine so let's say this, this is the information user is giving to store into the dv really is this possible a watch whose price will be 10 rupees and quantity is 0 fine 0.5 no right if i don't have any that request validation if user will send the request it will stored in the dv which is completely useless okay so it's good to 
restrict the field what value you want to accept to process that request through this request validation or bin validation let's move to the next one custom exception handling okay so when i say custom exception handling let me go back to the postman now i will just do one thing okay i'll just again add some wrong input uh, let's say quantity is zero supplier code is mandatory i am not giving that name is mandatory i am not giving that now if i'll send the request can you see here status is failed and how many field is having error supplier code quantity name and price now how you can map this information as a response i mean you need to define in a proper way right so that user can see the structure and he can understand what mistake he did so how you can do that first you need to know if i will give the wrong input and if i added the bin validation what exception i will get from the backend so if you will check here since i handled it it won't show anything in the console but it will give you the i didn't remember the exception name let me check go to the handler class let me zoom this it will give you method argument not valid exception now what i did here the way i am formatting the response here can you see here i am formatting in a different way right status is failed errors with all the field capturing and i am giving as part of response now how i can create this response or how when the exception occurs in my backend how i can delegate it to some advice class to handle the exception usually what happen when any exception occurs you can create a class products or any, anything okay you can create a class and makes you to annotate the class with add the rate rest controller advice okay don't define add the rate rest controller make sure to note this suffix which is advice add the rate rest controller advice is the annotation now for which exception of your code you want to handle the exception i want to handle the exception for method argument not valid exception when this exception throws from my controller or from my service then immediately delegate that request to this particular method okay handle method argument exception anything method name you can give anything now in this method what i am doing i am just getting all the binding results or all the fields which is having the error then i am creating my own error dt object and i am adding it to my custom response okay this was something the response class i created if you open this api response this is what my custom response class i created where i am just appending the status if the result is succeed it will add success if the result will be fail it will add the fail can you see here it's adding fail right and if you will check if there is error just map that error to this list if not just define the results i mean there could be two possible either your application will fail or it will give the result if it will getting the result map to here if you are getting the error map to here so this is something generic response i created okay now if you'll check here i am just binding the error object to the list and then i am setting my response and i am returning it back that is the reason i am getting the response in a proper way okay in the way i define to build my custom object but if you'll not create this custom object you can simply print the plain text what field is having the error you will get this default message which is there in your annotation okay so you can define n number of exception and you can customize their response i mean you can delegate all the exception to the corresponding advice method whatever you have written let's say let's go to the service class this is simple okay i'll tell you so while create a new product it will take the input okay and it will save in the dv let's assume there is some data access exception occurs or your dv connection is lost some some error happens from the dv server immediately it will throw some unwanted exception right which is runtime exception either data access exception or unknown host exception then immediately what i am doing i am catching that exception okay i am catching that exception but i am throwing my own custom exception with some message product service business exception okay similarly 
i am fetching list of product object from db somehow there is some problem i don't know there is some exception occurs immediately i am handling that exception what i will get from my dao call then i am throwing my own exception so it's good practice to maintain your generic exception okay i can write here illegal argument exception or run time exception but someone can easily understand okay this particular exception being initiated from product service okay so product service business exception now when your dao call failed and your method will cache the exception and will throw this particular exception then immediately request will delegate to whom the controller class now controller class will delegate that request to this handler class this handler class will search the exception which is throwing what is the exception we are throwing product or service product service business exception then simply the request will come to this method and he will like this is what i am building my object setting the status as failed and just adding the error object what message i am getting from my method similarly if your service or controller will throw this product not found exception then delegate the request to this particular method and set the status as failed and show me what error message being thrown from my service or controller class so for this let me show you that uh, i want to face the product whose id is not exist so i can find product not found exception so let's say this is get right i'll try for 10 send the request can you see here status is failed and error field is empty because i only set the field is empty here there is nothing okay and if you go to the postman what is the mes message exception occurred while fetch product from database for id 10 this is what the message i am throwing from my service if you go and check in the service get product method right exception occur while retrieving product from database this is the input and message okay and okay exception occur while this is the log right exception occurs while fetch product from database and product id same message i am seeing here i mean when this particular exception occurs immediately it cast the exception okay and the sorry from here only you are throwing the exception right if find by id is not giving anything this will be optional then simply throw this exception and if you will go and check in the controller class this exception will again propagate to the where the advice class okay so this is straightforward flow of the global exception handling in spring now it came to the handler class it understand okay this is what the exception is being throwing and he will just build this response and will return back you okay so this is how you can handle the exception in your spring or spring boot application i mean i already uploaded a exception handling bean validation video i will share the link in video description for your reference this is just i am giving the demonstration to how to handle the exception but detailed explanation i already covered a video i'll share that link in description so that you guys can understand in better way fine now let's move to the next one next key feature use custom response object so this is really a good practice to define your own custom response object okay so if you'll go and check in my controller class i created i'm returning the response entity and as part of the response entity i'm just wrapping with the type parameter api response okay if you'll open this class this is what my actual response from controller what i am expecting what it will return it will return one string value which is a status okay and the list of error detail and results so as i mentioned before it could be possible either your application will wrap with errors or with results if error is empty i annotate this right json include none null if it is empty any field is if it is empty and null just ignore it so i created this generic response to map the status and either results or errors so this entire will be my generic or custom response for my controller so if you will go and check the flow if you will go to the product service it will create the new product and it will return me the product response dto okay again i am using the dto and entity to different object request and response as a dto and the object which being which will be persist to the dv 
is the entity okay so here i am returning the response detail and i am giving the request detail and if you observe here i have one value mapper class i have written it i mean you can use the map struct or any other framework to do this uh, variable or the attribute wrapping convert dto to entity convert entity to dto while fetching the entity from the dv while returning it back to the service i want it to convert to the dto as a response or while taking the request from the uh, request body from the post method once i will convert that request to entity object then only i can save it to the dv right so there are two method convert to entity and vice versa convert to dto so if you will check in my service class i am taking the input as a request then i am converting it as a entity object i am saving the entity to the dv now whatever the entity result i am getting i am converting it as a dto okay and then i am returning that dto as a from the service now in controller i define one api response which will be generic and i have used the builder pattern i will come to that point okay api response dot builder set the status as success result as a this response dto product response dto which you will get from the service okay the, see here if you observe here i define the type generic i can set any object to this particular results i can set list of employee list of department anything that is the reason i have defined the type generic so in controller i can use the single object or i can use the list of object here can you see here list of product object so it's good practice to follow the type generic while defining your custom response so that any object you can map here okay and another thing to observe if you'll check my controller class let me minimize this okay okay if you'll check my controller class i am returning response entity i can directly return the api response directly but i am returning response entity it's a good practice to define the status code while returning it okay so if you observe here while building the response entity for create new product i am defining http status created if you don't want to do that you need to use something like response response status okay response status http status dot created either way you can either return direct object and define the response status manually if you want to be it to be part of your response better to return the response entity and define the status okay so always when you want to create a new resource it should be created and while fetching the status should be okay okay and while deleting no content or something like that so it's up to you how you want to handle either this response entity or you want to use at the rate response status annotation okay let's move to the next one so the next key feature is use design pattern no complaints design patterns are already a best practices but you must identify the place where you want to use them okay we know the we can use the factory design pattern single turn abstract factory or any solid principle we can implement them but you need to identify exactly which location i need to go for what design patterns for example let's let's go to the code and you can see here right to build any object i am just using the builder design pattern so this is straightforward i don't want to take the overheader to create the object or to deal with the object creation complexity so i need someone self who will build the object for me so i i can go for the builder design pattern here or let's say you have a class that class is depends on another class and again that another class depends on another class that is called something object creational complexity right let's say for simplicity you have something called a okay and then b and c so a class depends on b okay and b class depends on c then in that case if you want to create the object of a you need to create the object of c first and then inject that c to the b then create the object of b then inject that b to the a so to just access the single object of a i need go with the double iteration of b object creation and c object creation so in in that case to avoid that 
i can create a factory design pattern by calling a single method where i will get the object of directly a so you need to understand where exactly you need to use that design pattern so here i just want to build the object of api response so i simply use the builder design pattern so again builder design pattern you can write it manually but since you are using the lombok if you will go and check in the api response class i have some annotation called add the red builder so if you don't want to use the lombok provided builder annotation simply create a class or you can do something like this okay go to the controller i mean i need to create this object manually first i will create this object dt1 equal to new api response let me let me copy this of type generic okay now in this response duty object i need to create each object and i need to set it go to the api response first i need to set the status then i need to set the list of error then i need to set the result something like this uh, go to the controller response duty 1 dot set status okay and then you can write response duty 1 dot set either if you have error if not you have results okay you can add this product response detail i mean manually i'm just setting each and every value but there is a builder pattern rather than you write it you just annotate at the rate builder in the class where you want to implement the builder design pattern then rest i will take care just specify what is your type generic and set the value what you want okay so this is how you can also use the builder design pattern and also you know right singleton design pattern by default it is there in spring so you can define the scope if you want to override the behavior of singleton i mean if you want to use the prototype or any other design pattern you can define the other scope in your bean okay also if you are using interface based designing i mean if you are designing interface i mean if if you have service interface and service interface impl a controller interface and its implementation or if you are following the interface interface based designing then you can also use the solid principle right like you know the purpose of solid so even i have uploaded video on solid principle i will share the link in video description so that you can at least find out what what is the exact fit where you can add those solid principle okay now let's move to the next one use yml instead of properties so in spring boot application so if you observe if you go and check the run statement i mean i okay i already started the server right if you observe the server is started on port 9191 i am able to access all my endpoint with the port 9191 how i can able to access the port or where exactly i can define the port so you can if you are using spring boot there is something called go to the src main resources folder you can define application dot properties file i mean anything the default behavior of spring boot if you want to override those features or those functions you can define in application dot properties okay and in my application i am giving this object and it is getting stored in the dv i mean somewhere i have written my database connection right that is what the exact place where you can define in application dot properties file but you can see here my application dot properties file is empty so you have another alternative to use application dot yml file so why yml file why not application dot properties file i will tell you right away so if you observe all the data source related properties spring dot data source driver class name url username and password i have defined here okay then i have commented here this all below configuration what i have added up to this is specific to the jpa so i added the comment it's good practice to define the comment in your configuration file so this is something jp related properties then server.pod i have defined here 9191 let's say you have something called you want to configure some email related stuff okay just add a comment email config and then define spring or somewhere okay if i define spring before here only i can define spring email mail okay mail 
then uh, let, let me check what all we have properties or port password username you can define all the field here and you can add the comment here email config related stuff you have added here okay just add a space and just add this comment up to this this is data source configuration and now i am adding my email related configuration so you can segregate by adding a simple comment okay so i don't need this i just want to show you how you can segregate let me remove that okay fine we have removed it now what is the difference why do we go for application dot ml why we are not using the application dot properties so if you have two file application dot properties and application dot ml file spring boot will always scan the application dot ml file first okay so by default it load a yml file called bootstrap dot yml file and then if you use application dot yml file first spring boot will scan that yml file then it will read your properties file and the main drawback of using this application dot properties file you need to let's say i want to define the data source here okay spring dot data source dot driver class name okay and you define your driver class name similarly to define user name again you need to repeat the prefix okay let me zoom this spring dot data source dot url now again if you want to define the user name copy this prefix user name if you want to define password copy this prefix okay if you observe the syntax or the key is getting duplicated i mean the exact key is not getting duplicated here but the prefix is the redundant here i mean keep we are repeating same prefix in each and every key where we are defining the data source okay but if you read in the application dot yml file it is clearly in the hierarchy pattern can i let me zoom this okay if you will read here see if someone can easily read this application dot yml file he can understand okay inside this data source you need to give driver class name url user name and password so it is in proper hierarchy in a proper readable format okay so that is the reason it's good practice to use application dot yml file over application dot properties file fine now let's move to the next one encrypt or externalize sensitive information so if you know in our application we connected our application to the dv right so that is where i configure my data source related properties driver class name url username and password but this password is sensitive information for me for my application okay or if i configure the email username and password of my email is also sensitive information which i don't want to expose as part of the code i can write the password something like this okay this is what my exact password but this is not recommended to expose your sensitive information of your application so just encrypt them how you will encrypt it there are couple of library i am using the jasipt library here to encrypt it even i have uploaded jasipt video if anyone is not aware about it i will share the link in description okay so you can refer how you can encrypt the password so i just use the jasipt encryption to encrypt it spring boot is smart enough and he have the valid integration with jasipt to decrypt it while connecting to the dv so this this is one of the way you can encrypt your credential but again this is not the recommended way to keep encrypted value of your sensitive information in your code itself you need to centralize it okay or you need to externalize it from your application when i say externalize either keep it in a vault or keep it in spring cloud console or keep it in a github config server and load it in application when it re required okay so this is how you can encrypt it but it's a good practice to always externalize your sensitive information from your application to the different um, secret manager okay so we have the secret manager vault uh, console you need to check um, how you can externalize there okay now let's move to the next one next is write 
end to end unit test case with coverage so we have written the api right we have written the api we have written the uh, services class handler exception handling everything we have written i mean we are done with the development but did we write the test case for it now why do we need the test case the first reason to have the end to end jnet test to validate that all the features or all the api whatever you develop is working as expected how you can verify that using the test case now if you'll go and check the test folder product service application test this is where the test case i have written okay i have written for add product test i mean create new product test you can change the method name okay better i will copy from the controller create new product test okay create new product test this is the test case i have written and if you observe here i am just mocking my dao call i don't want this test data to import or to save in my dv so i am just mocking my dao so that all the database call will be bypass here and i am hitting my actual api okay this is what the endpoint url i have defined slash products and i am using the mock mbc to call my controller class and i am validating the status and i am just verifying the id whether it is there or not okay and similarly i have written for should return all products from dv i have written the two test class or two test method but if you go and check in your controller class let me go to the controller class we have 1 2 3 and 4 uh, 3 basically 3 3 method we have not 3 4 yeah we have four method but i have written only the test coverage or test case for two method i mean two end point so it's not a good practice you should write the test case for all your end point if you want to perform the integration test integration test means the flow will always go from your controller from controller it will go service from service it will go dao it will cover all of your layer when you will run the integration test so in that case you need to write the test case for each and every scenario when i say scenario first you need to write the positive for each and every uh, end point and then you need to write the negative scenario for each and every end point now how you will know whether you really cover the test case for those methods and classes or not simply if you are using the intellij id i will run the test okay uh, yeah can you see here the option run this particular test with coverage just run it then you can understand what all class method lines is covered as part of your test case and and what all you didn't cover so far and what is the coverage count okay so let it be complete so if you observe here you can see here right java techi classes has been covered 83% method is 68% and 55% is the line which is covered okay if you'll go and check if you'll expand it let me minimize this if you'll expand it config 100% covered even though we didn't write because there is nothing we don't have any class over there okay and controller is 100% covered i don't know how it, okay classes is 100% cover but method is 66% because we write for only two method and two method we didn't cover okay line we cover 51 so simply you can find in each and every class or package how much is the coverage and if you'll go to that class let me go to the controller class let me go to this class you can observe here something the red mark here can you see here this is where the red mark this red mark means you didn't cover those part i mean this particular scenario has not been covered as part of your test case can you see here this is also we didn't cover but can you see the green mark for what i have written the test case see here the green okay, let me okay this is what the green mark it means the test case the test coverage written for this particular scenario so that is the reason it is in green mark and for what scenario we didn't write the test case this is in like light orange you can say okay or yeah this is what the color you will get by seeing this you can easily understand okay this is what the test i have to write because this is not coverage okay and the number you can find from the 
recovery step. How much covered in each every package? What is at class level, method level, and line? Uh, what 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 is the number of line uh, covered? Okay. So this is how you must need to define define the end to end integration test using J unit. Now let's move to the next one. Avoid null pointer exception by using optional. Okay. This is really a cool feature introduced in Java 8 to use the optional. So usually what happened when you will call something and if you will not getting anything, I mean let's say I want to face some product object by ID. Okay. If the ID which I will give is not present in my DV, I will get null object as a reference. So then I don't know whether really it will give me the value or it will give me the null because I am assuming that ID will be present in my DV. But if you will get the null and then you will do any operation with that product object, then you will get the null pointer exception. So this can be leveraged using this optional class given by Java 8. How you can do that? For example, let me go to my service class. Okay. Project. Let me go to my service class. Can you see your, this number is getting displayed here in my class? I mean the test coverage. So go to the service. Now in the service, can you observe here? I am doing get product by ID. So I am giving long value as a product ID. It will get the product object from the DV. Okay, let me zoom this. It will get the product object from DV. Now if you will open this find by ID method given by JPA, the return type is optional. Okay, let's say it's not optional, it is returning some object. Okay, let me do one thing. I will write a method. In product service, what I'll do, um, I will do? I will just write here and then I will comment it. Okay. So let's say I will write a method product repository dot find by any field of the product. I want to write a method. Okay. Uh, go to the product. I want to write by okay uh, supplier code. Just find by prefix and then add the supplier code in a camel case and then I need to give this value as an input right so uh, for now okay let me add here okay or I will just hard code here because I just want to show you the use of optional string supplier code something like this okay and then I need to pass the supplier code here it will return me the product object now I need to create this method fine here my repository is not returning me the optional it is returning me the object so it's a bad designing you always need to return the optional when you are expecting a single object to return from your method okay so I have written this okay because I was not aware about some class called optional I have designed that time this code now in the service whatever supplier code I will give if that object is not present this P will point to the null right it will give you the null and then with this P anything if you will do you will get the null pointer exception so how you can avoid that using the optional simply you can check optional of nullable this value p okay it will return you the optional of product object now before access that simply you can check p1 dot not p1 okay i'll, I'll write here if p1 is present i mean this value is present then do operation i mean just get that object and return it back else throw some exception okay you can design in such a way and in that case even though this field will be null you are safe here from the null pointer exception if go with the if else if not product repository find by id will give you the optional object just check if you are getting the value well or else throw this exception to the user with the meaningful message he can understand okay whatever the id i gave is not present in the dv okay 
this is how you can use the optional to avoid the null pointer exception so let me comment this because anyway i am not going to use this just comment this out even i will go to the repo i will remove this or i will just comment it out fine so this is how you can use the optional to avoid null pointer exception now let's move to the next one use best practices for the collections framework you know if you are designing something or any any basic uh, code if you will do we must need to use the collection framework without collection we cannot design a single application right when i say collection framework we can use the list set map based on our requirement when you want to um, maintain the key value you can go for the map when you want to store only the unique value you can go for the set when you want to allow any kind of object even though it's duplicate it doesn't matter you can go with the list right so how you can use the collection or what all best practices you can follow okay so i'll show you go to the code then let's say you got a requirement let me show you the database we have some seven object okay and if you observe here for electronics product type there are three object for kitchen and home product type there are two object and for home appliances there is one object okay and for fashion there is one object now let's say you got a requirement to group the list of product object by product type i mean you need to design something like that key should be electronics then it should hold three object three product object which belongs from this product type electronics okay similarly for kitchen uh, there should be two it should be group by right group by product type then how you can do that you you need to write lot of uh, a loop and all to retrieve it from the dv and do the group by add the if condition lot of statement you need to write for example let's say you don't know there is something called java 8 you are writing in the java 7 okay so if you'll go and check in my service okay let me minimize this fine so i have written this method okay before uh, java 8 i don't know java 8 was there so first what i need to do first i need to gather all the product types available in the dv okay electronics fashion kitchen and home or what is that kitchen okay now i need to see this is my first iteration from the dv first iteration from dv now next again i need to fetch all the product object from the dv okay or this is fine you can one time load the product object then just get available product type from there by creating another list okay but let's assume this is second now iterate each and every type The, from the list i mean the all the product available in your dv each time check the product type then add into a list then add into the map type product type and list of product object belongs to that product type can you see your the number of iteration and number of validation we have added here this is what we have done in the java 7 but this can be written within two line if you are using the java 8 okay when i say it will be written in two line it's not only we are reducing the syntax rather than that we are just getting the better performance as well let me show you in the java 8 in java 8 in a single step get all the object from the dv then i mean it will give you the entity right i am just converting it to the dto then check the product type should not be null then simply use the grouping by this product type i mean based on product type you want to group right just use based on what field you want to group for now i just want to group by product type so i have written this internally it's not that whatever we have written here is really cool again internally it will also do the iteration and do the validation to uh, uh, group the object by product type but as compared to this this code syntactically looks good and performance wise you will get the better performance than this java 7 code it's not that java 7 is not good some of the in some of the scenario you won't find the syntax to write java 8 that time you need to go for the 
Java 7 only. But the reason I am saying it will give you the better performance, you can go for the stream and parallel stream. This is the sequential flow. I don't want to go with the parallel stream. But for better achievement, you can change it to the parallel stream and it will use your multi-core of your system and definitely you will get the better response. The moral here, the code is easily readable and it will be in a proper structure with the less line of code okay, as compared to the Java 7. So again, it depends which collection you want to use as part of your requirement. So let me run this particular uh, method. Okay, we will return the list of uh, product by grouping by types. So I will go to the controller class. Let me close all. Go to the controller class. Okay, I have a method. Let me zoom this. I have a method. This will call the product service get products by types what I just uh, explained from the service class and it will give you this result. So the URL is slash types. I can directly run in the browser, right? Uh, types. Let me show you here. Can you see here? For kitchen and home, we have two objects. Mixture and this geyser. For fashion, we have only one watch. For electronics, we have three elements. Fine. For home, we are having only one element. I mean, the way you are expecting your collection to be designed, you can use that. Here I use just map. Okay. Map of key as a string, value as a list of product object. Can you see here? List of product object. So it's up to you what collection you want to use as per your need. Fine. Let's move to the Next one, use caching. So I hope you know the purpose of use this caching. So it's always a good practice to reduce the round trip from your application to the DV. I mean, let's say I'll, I'll show you in the code. Let's say uh, where I'm loading all the product subject. Okay. So this particular method will load all the product subject. First time user send the request. Okay, user send the request, request goes to the service and from service it call the, let me zoom this, from service, let me show you in the proper structure, okay, just give me a second, okay, from the service it will call your DAO dot find all, it will load the response and it will return back to the controller. Now again user second time send the request, okay, again request came to the service, went to the service class method and service class method again will call your DAO and it will get you the list of object and you will uh, return it back. But every time why I why it will connect to the DV and load all the uh, response back? Why not first time it will load and it will store somewhere so that when second time user will access this method it will load from that cache or load from that in memory rather than hit my DV. That is what something called caching. How you can enable that cache? There are couple of cache mechanism available in uh, framework. Now here I just use the default uh, cache mechanism from the spring, but you can use the Redis cache and uh, th there are lot of cache, M2 cache, lot of cache. Okay, you can use any of the cache mechanism, Hazel cache. Okay, it's up to you based on your need which cache mechanism you need to use. That you need to find out. But the purpose of using this cache to reduce the round trip of your request from your application to the DV. First time when user send the request, execute this DAO call, load all the dependency, like all the response from the DV. And when second time user will send the request, don't go and check the DV. Whatever in the first call you capture, just return it back. For that you need to store that somewhere. Okay. Since I am using the Spring Boot default case, it internally use the concurrent hash map to store the object as a cache okay so this is a simple step you need to enable at the rate cacheable and if you go and check in your main class you need to define at the rate enable caching this is the two annotation is enough to go with the default cache of spring boot so let me show you let me rerun okay let me go to the main class let me rerun this so i can show you in the log on the first call to the find all, it will go and check in the DV, it will load everything. And in second call, 
it will not hit the dv i can show you in the log itself okay so let it run so it's up now let me clear this console so i will go to the chrome i will okay anything for this also i applied right but i will try for the slash products endpoint let me run this it load all the product object available from the dv we have total seven record and it load all the seven record so if you see the flow see here product service get execution started and if you observe here it fire the select query select this from the table select star from the table it will load all the products okay now let me clear this console in the second call i should not see this select statement because i don't want my application will again call the dv where already it cached the information in the first call so we should not see this select statement let me clear this not here i'll go to the browser i'll just run it again if you'll go and check can you see is there any select statement no right only you are seeing the response the log statement whatever you added in the controller now if i'll hit again i'll i'll try for four five time 1 2 3 4 5 okay if you go and check you can only see the five log statement i mean there is no single select query fired in the second call so first time it load all the products object from the dv and stored in the concurrent hash map so that in second call it check the flag if it is already true rather than hit the dv it will fetch from the concurrent hash map that is the reason you are not able to see the select statement and it will definitely give you the better performance if uh, if you try this in the postman you can find the time difference okay first time it will take some time second time you will get the response in fraction of millisecond okay so that is the reason cache mechanism or caching is very important aspect if you are using the database uh, connection if you are basically retrieving uh, frequent uh, call to the dv okay now let's move to the next one remove okay use pagination okay this is another useful uh, context you need to use to improve the performance of your application so let's say for now we have only seven record okay let's assume we have thousand of record now if i'll do this get call i need to scroll scroll down like up to the end right to see all the record now even though it is a seven still i need to scroll down but if it is a thousand or 100 record i will end up with the scroll down to see all each and every record a again it will load everything 100 record that is not a good practice you need to paginate it when i say paginate you should give that option to the user what all value you want to check i mean let's see let's say there is 100 row or 100 object in dv user want to see only 10 then he want to see the next again it will show next 10 object so that control you, you want to give to the user to achieve the better performance rather than load all the product object in a single shot so how you can do that since you are using the spring data jpa jpa is smart enough he provided a method uh, let me show you go to the service class product service this is where we are loading the all the products right while loading it you can use the pageable or uh, let me check the method find all there is a method directly you can use page okay simply you can try something like this okay let let me check new uh page yeah can you see a new page request new page request here you need to give the input i mean i want to see the record from 0 to 5 you can give the page and size why it is crying int int okay it's up to you if i don't want to use the sort it's up to you whether you want to use the sort as well as the paging or not but just give me a second i mean i can remove this or i guess we can okay just give me a second we can do something like this i mean there is a class called page request dot okay page request of give the number of record you want to see 
on first call you want to see 0 to 10 and in the second call ui need to set the value now the flag is 0 to 10 on second call it should change to the 11 to 20 okay in third call 21 to 30 that number should be keep on changing when user will take the next action so this is how you can control the number of record to display in the front end or in the response okay let me reverse this change this is how you can implement the pagination but usually this pagination concept it's good to implement from the front end side rather than uh, use it from the back end side okay uh, it's sometime it's recommended to implement from the back end but uh, so far i experienced maximum pagination and sorting algorithm has been written in the front end okay now let's move to the next one remove unnecessary code variables methods so sometimes what we have in our code or in a class we have something unused input statement now if you will check here these two statement we are not using but it will occupy some memory in your um, jvm right even though we are not using still it will occupy some memory when you load this class so it's good to remove the method and input statement or variable which is not being used okay so it's not uh, in the same class you can check in each and every class if anything which you see here again we are using this input statement but it's not being used anywhere so it's not only input statement you can find lot of unused variable in your code in real time project you can find lot of private method which will not being used anywhere so you can remove them that is a really good practice so if you will check in the service this method we are not using okay see here the method which we are using the check the color okay we are not using it's not like that you can also use this just uh, hover your mouse to that particular method then command click on that no uses found in all places i mean this method is not being used anywhere so you can simply remove that okay which is not used so let it be i just want to show you the difference to group using java 7 and java 8 so that is the reason i just added but i am not calling it from anywhere fine so it's good to remove unused input method and variable from your project now let's move to the next one using a comments so using a comments is really a good practice when i say using a comment i mean uh, let's say one new member joined to a team and he came and check okay this is something method get products will return the list of product object and if he is a good developer he can easily understand but it's a good practice to annotate or tell the role of that method if it is required it's not good practice to always um, add a comment statement for each and every method i mean let's say uh, just double click on the method you will get this icon add java docs okay here you can say this method will fetch product from db by id okay and the request parameter is product id return will be product response from db so if you found the method what we have written in service or anywhere in the class is complex and we need to tell to some role about that class you can add the comment but again this is not uh, mandatory okay I could see lot of code there is zero comment added on top of the method but it is a good practice if you found that particular method is having some complex thing which you want to highlight then use the comment not in all the class and all the method okay fine let's move to the next one use a common code formatting style so this is really required right use a common code formatting style means just go to the IntelliJ ID let's say this line will be start from here and this will be start from here okay some some something like this this will be start from here this will be start from here if you will not follow the proper formatting uh, let's say this will also start from here something like this okay if your code will be in such structure it's really annoying to read it product response detail then equal in the next line belly mapper is in the next line 
so it's good practice to just do a command a command option l to format in a proper line structure okay now can you see here this i added down so it is it is not formatting but yeah can you see here the throw which i added a multi space if i'll do command a command option l it will be in a proper line so it, it will good for you so that uh, you can easily read the line of code if it is in a proper line okay this is not something hard and fast or someone will force you to do or to keep your uh, line of statement in a proper line but it's for your uh, practice which will make you more productive to read the um, uh, particular line in the method okay so let it be i don't want to remove it because this you can understand the use of optional so it's good to format the code okay now let's move to the next one use sonar lint so being a developer whatever code we write we always think that okay this this is the best code what i have written and whatever other are telling about the or what other are giving the review comment they don't know anything right but always it's recommended to identify the code smell or uh, code bug from your application what you have written when i say what is code smell sometimes we are writing code and we are not caring about the code duplication and we are not caring about the performance we are not caring about the circular dependency then in that case your application can break or it can go down for longer time if it will find some circular dependency which could be a critical um, what i can say critical uh, for your project so at the time of development don't think you are only the smart just take help from some third party tool sonar lint or sonar cube to understand what mistake you did while writing the code or how you can avoid the code smell from your uh, piece of code what you have written so what you can do that for that you can use the sonar lint in your id so sonar lint is a plugin available it's available for intellij and eclipse both what you can do you can simply go to the intellij idea preference and then if you will go and check marketplace already installed so i will find inside the install just search for sonar can you see here sonar lint makes you to add this plugin and then restart your id now if i will go to the controller and if i will open the sonar lint current file i mean the file which i open is the controller class it is suggesting me see here there is a code smell string literal should not be duplicated who string literal i am duplicating here success can you see here how many time i am duplicating here one two i mean it's i am duplicating this same string in each and every method rather than duplicate it what it is suggesting me duplicate string literal make the process of refactoring error prone since you must be sure to one other hand constant can be it will suggest you what you need to do okay so see here it is suggesting me the solution to define it as a global constant rather than repeatedly define in each and every method so i can simply what i will do command option c and i will define in all occurrence okay you can see here now this is defined as a constant here this constant i am using in each and every method now again if you will see here still there are few code smell this is also critical see you can find the uh, what i can say whether it is a critical or uh, minor or major the priority you can say okay you can find out if it is a critical then you must need to fix it what is that remove use of generic wild card okay what is the return type product response dt right okay the return type is api response so better to define the generic here fine similarly you need to fix all of the issue how you are finding similarly if you go and check the service it is saying remove this block of comment a commented outline of code should be removed it's fine it's major and i don't think this will impact anything so it's good to as i already mentioned it's always recommend to remove unused statement variable or class and method 
which is present in your class so you can remove that so this is how you can use the sonar lint and this is really very useful for identifying small box and based practices to avoid unnecessary box and code quality issue before your code went to the production okay so make sure to use this sonar plugin in your id for safer site and real in real time this sonar uh, will be integrated with your jenkins okay so when, when any build will be start that time the sonar queue will scan your uh, piece of code and will give you the what, what is the code smell and what are the um, uh, bug or issue is there in your code okay but for safer side before push your code to the git add this sonar lint plugin so that uh, there will be no complaint at the time of build okay so let's move to the next one be simple this is just a simple tips always try to write simple and readable codes the same simple logic can be implemented using different ways but it is difficult to understand if it is not readable or understandable okay make sure whenever you are writing the code at least that can be understood by you then it can be understood by someone so always maintain a simple piece of code which can be easily readable sometimes complex logic consumes more memory okay these are few of the key features you need to focus on your mind while developing uh, any spring boot project this is not the end there are lot of small tips and practices i will cover that in my next upcoming tutorial okay do let me know in a comment section if you have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept